crave it, have it, spin it, flip it, keep it chill, shake it, if it's been dumped, pick it up, leave it where it belongs, resurrect it, care for it, wear it, and wear it again. A really cool ad, right? But what's really happening under the surface? H&M uses cause-related marketing strategies to encourage consumers to take care of our society and environment. By doing so, the Swedish fashion brand aims to increase its profits and improve its public image. In this video presentation, we are going to provide a textual and contextual analysis of the latest conscious campaign from a gender and diversity perspective in order to investigate the contradictory effects of these practices and provide alternative solutions. In its ad, H&M shows people of different racial backgrounds having a good time together in different locations. We can see men and women of color with different hairstyles hanging out together in a park, in a club, and in a street of their city. Meanwhile, the text on the screen gives us insights about the composition of the garments of the collection. We learn that at least 50% of the clothes is made from recycled PET bottles, and for a few seconds we can see images of bottles and then the textile allegedly obtained from them. The transition, however, is extremely fast. It's easy to understand that H&M wants us to focus on the values associated with the products and not on the production process. Indeed, according to After Ride, media text contains ideological and value messages while serving commercial purposes. Analyzing the ad using the concept of intersectionality, we can see how H&M is celebrating diversity through its models of different sex and ethnicities. At the same time, it is promoting its new sustainable collection in order to boost profit while exhibiting its commitment for the environmentalist cause. This is why the voiceover in the ad seems to give us orders. We are invited to crave it, have it, spin it, flip it and wear it, wear it again, referring to the clothes showed in the ad. In this way, as Gill states, ecological ideas are appropriated for commercial purposes and give back to the public in a commodified form, something to be desired and then purchased. But are we sure that we can really make differences just acting inside the marketplace as consumers? In this ad, H&M tries to exploit the concern of the general public for the environment with a strategy of cause-related marketing. According to Hawkins, it's when a purchase of a certain product triggers a donation or environmentally friendly approach from the company selling that product. In the ad, H&M claims that their clothes are made from 50% recycled materials that come from their own recycled clothes or plastic bottles. Additionally, they ask the consumer to return the clothes they no longer need or use, in order to recycle them and at the same time gain a discount for the next buy. It's a win-win situation for everyone, H&M, the consumer and the environment. Cool, right? Although these efforts seem great at first glance, people have questioned how much H&M actually mitigates the massive and growing company's environmental impact. Critics of this kind of campaign suggest that these exhibitions of devotion to the notion of sustainability are greenwashing, distracting from the extent of the harm the company does, and even boosting sales. H&M convinces the consumers that they play a role in the natural resources management, as the result will be for ways to be recycled. Citizens fetishize their commodities as their purpose is not only to be fashionable and practical, but also to serve a good purpose. These types of campaigns enable people to see that consuming ethically is good enough, that their citizenship can be practiced only through consumerism. But is H&M really helping the environment? To grow the materials, dye and finish them with chemicals, manufacture and ship all those clothes puts a tremendous strain on the environment and consumes vast resources. Guardian's journalist Lucy Siegel argues that given the limitations of current technology it would likely take H&M up to 12 years to use just a thousand tons of clothing waste. Meanwhile it produces that same volume of new clothes in a matter of days. 
The worst part of all is that H&M did not deny those calculations by the journalist. In other words, the company deliberately lies to the face of the consumers. Ultimately, the problem is still the business model, one that relies on a high volume of sales and a breakneck rate of growth, but only for fast fashion giants like H&M. This does not mean that change is worthless. In our opinion, these changes can be found both inside and outside the market. Regarding disposal of clothes, second-hand stores are an easy way to make them last longer. Clothes in fast fashion are produced to be replaced in a short amount of time. To buy and give clothes to a thrift shop is a way to lower your carbon footprint by reducing the depletion of resources required by the speed of the fashion market. Also, when consumers support the local thrift shops instead of returning the clothes to H&M, the local economy is boosted. In this way, profit is not only distributed between market giants like in H&M, and their hegemony is susceptible to change. One of the possible strategies to be applied outside of the market could be the donation of clothes through various practices like the use of donation bins. They can be found in almost every city and have several benefits, both environmental and social, like keeping clothes out of landfills, reducing the impact of production of new clothes, but also funding sustainable development projects with the money earned from their selling. Adding to that, vulnerable social groups like homeless people can benefit directly from this action, as the clothes we will donate will be of huge impact to them. Apart from the above strategies, the purpose of this video is to fight back the hegemonic ideology of fast fashion. In order to do that, commodities must be defetishized and what is underlined by cosmetic marketing must be unveiled. Projects like ours and of our classmates serve this purpose and bring the consumer closer to the true colors of greenwashing practices by fast fashion companies like H&M. But there is still plenty of work to be done. As citizens, we should raise awareness through the use of social media to help others debunk these misleading campaigns by private companies. All in all, what we want is to unlike the fact that Considering themselves as ethical consumers is not enough. We would like them not only to consume ethically, but also to act politically as citizens outside the market.